Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Um, after a couple of our other videos, we had a fair few questions from uh, different viewers that were asking the differences between uh, the three volume types that we have available on a QNAP. Um, so those three volume types would be, um, firstly, the static volume, then we've got thin provisioned volumes, and we've got thick provisioned volumes. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, show you the differences between them, um, when you should choose one over the other, um, and perhaps a, a disadvantage of, of one or two of them over a different type as well. Um, to give you an example of this, I've got an AS set up here. Um, generally not the recommended way to set up an AS, but it's just for the purpose of the demo so that I can get um, all three set up here all three volume types. Um, so with this, I've got a, a TS-983XU-RP, uh, which is a 1U wrap mount NAS. It's got four three and a half inch bays, uh, five two and a half inch bays. Um, and I've also thrown in a QM2 card into the, the back with four SSDs as well on there. And um, just so that I've got enough drives to illustrate the differences uh, on that. So that's kind of what this unit looks like. So if we go across to storage and snapshots, uh, you can see the setup that I've got here. So I'll expand the uh, the different types out. I'm going to close down storage pool one with the system volume because that's not the one I want to show the, the differences on. So here we've got storage pool two. And in that, I've got several different volumes created. So we can see the types over here. We've got thin, thick, and we've even got an iSCSI LUN that's configured as a thin one as well. Um, and at the bottom there, we've got data vol three, which is what we would call a static volume. So when you create um, a new volume anywhere, we do give you the three choices here on screen. Um, the default is always going to be thick volume, um, and you've got the different options. And it gives you a little explanation over the differences right here on the, the choice screen. So static volume is the single fixed space allocation. So what you create is what you've got, um, and you cannot use snapshots on a static volume. Um, when you've got the thick or the thin, um, both support snapshots. Um, and the difference between a thick volume and a thin volume is if you create a thick volume at 500 gigs, it will immediately reserve 500 gigs straight away. It's, it's locked to that volume, so nothing else can use it. Um, if you're using a thin volume, you could create that volume at 500 gigs, but because you've just created it and you haven't put any data in, the actual size of that 500 gig volume is effectively zero, very small. So it only allocates the space as you use it. So if you copy in 10 gigs of data, well, that 500 gig thin volume now becomes um, 10 gigs in size, basically. So that's how it's going to work. So I'll illustrate that in a moment here. So those are the three options that you've got. So static volumes we'll start with. Um, they perform the best by a small margin because there's no overheads running a storage pool or anything like that. The downside of a static volume is if I go into here and I manage it, we can see how I've got this one set up. So I've got the NAS uh, hard drives uh, one and two allocated. I've got three and four spare so that I can do something with. These are just set up in a RAID 0 for test purposes. Don't recommend using RAID 0 for normal use. Um, so here with disks one and two, this is fully consuming both of those disks. I cannot use those two disks for anything else. That's just for this volume. And in a lot of cases, that's just fine. That's that's how a lot of users might want to set it up. Absolutely fine to use this sort of setup. Now, the options sort of go away if you want to do something um, different with the NAS. So if we look at storage pool two, I created the thick and thin volumes a little, little differently. So the thick and thin volumes don't actually have the RAID set on them. The storage pool itself does. So if I was to go to the storage pool and click manage, we can see how I've got this whole group set up. So I'm using two of the PCIe uh, NVMe SSDs in here. So I've got those added in. Um, as a storage pool. So the RAID, again, RAID 0, don't recommend it, but this is where it's all set up on the storage pool itself. Every volume you create within that storage pool, whether it's a thick or a thin, they will absorb the um, uh, protection or speed options or whatever you've set on that RAID pool, whichever RAID version that you've, you've chosen, everything within it's going to share it. So what we can see here from the storage pool, because I've got two volumes here, a thick and a thin volume, they're both, I created them both at 500 gigs in capacity. Now the thin volume has added absolutely no space to the used um, uh, uh, table here, uh, the, the bar graph, uh, line graph of the storage pool. So when I go and look at that, I can see that the volumes and LUNs um, are taking up about 590 gigabytes of the space. 
Now, almost all of that is immediately taken by the thick volume because it's pre-allocated storage. So when I created that 500 gig volume, it immediately took and reserved 500 gigs of capacity straight from that storage pool. So that's always going to have it. The thin volume is, is quite clever in the way it does it, that it only allocates the space as it's used. So the side benefit here um, is especially if you're working in a, a large corporate, something like that, and you have a department that comes to you as IT manager and says, um, hi, yeah, we're the marketing team, um, we need um, five terabytes of space. Uh, you can see that here in my storage pool, I've actually only got 1.8 terabytes, and you as the IT manager might know, yeah, they might use five terabytes of space, but it might take them five years to get to that level. You know, for the first couple of years, they might only need a few hundred gigs for what they're doing. So the side benefit here is I could go and create a new volume in my storage pool two. I'm gonna create a thin volume. I'm gonna click next. So I've picked storage pool two because that's where I want it to live. You get all your different storage pools listed here so you can assign these volumes anywhere. So I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna call it marketing because marketing wanted that uh, five terabyte volume. So I'm gonna change this number here to terabytes and I'm gonna change it to five terabytes. Now. This shouldn't really be possible in some people's understandings because there's only 1.8 terabytes available in the whole storage pool. I don't have this much capacity in this volume, uh, in this storage pool. But what it's going to let me do, it's going to allow me to assign it, but it is going to say I've oversubscribed the storage pool. But if I go click next, so it's saying you must monitor the storage pool because these uh, you cannot get to 100% usage on this volume with the current storage allocated. So if I click OK, and I click finish, it's gonna go off and create me that five terabyte volume, but it's gonna not take any space, any extra space from that storage pool because there's nothing in this yet. Um, we haven't copied any data there. So me as the IT manager, I'm going to monitor this folder. I'm gonna make sure this volume doesn't get to a size where it's exceeding the storage pool two size. Now, if it ever did get to a situation where I see that the marketing team is starting to use quite a bit of their space, and I'm actually going to run out of physical storage, that's where storage pools um, and the flexibility can come into, into its own really. So what you can do is you can right click on that storage pool, you can go manage, and there's an option up here to expand the pool. So to expand the pool, you can simply expand the pool by, if you've got a redundant RAID mode setup, you can replace existing drives with bigger drives, um, or you can simply create and add a new group. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pick the other two um, NVMe SSDs that I've got added there. Um, I'll set it up as a RAID 0 just for speed here. We'll click Next, and we'll expand it. So we're going to click OK. Um, so now this is going to take away some of this over provision that I've just done. So I've still not got enough space for the full five terabytes um, of what I've created, but it's going to allow me um, to let that marketing folder grow even larger. So we can see right now uh, that the blue line here is is taken over, you know, 75% of the space because it's quite oversubscribed. Uh, once this expansion of the, uh, the vault of the storage pool has happened, um, this blue line is going to shift up a bit because I've now got more physical space. So I'm not as oversubscribed. Uh, so we'll just let that go off and finish now. So that's, that'll take just a couple of minutes to expand that and create that new RAID group and add the drive. So we'll, we'll come back as soon as that's finished. There we go. So we'll click OK and we'll click close. So what's going to happen now is we can see that this blue line has moved up the uh, up the chart quite a ways now. So I'm still oversubscribed. I've still allocated more space than I physically have. Um, but now I've got more room for that volume to physically grow into. So I can see that the storage pool has a lot of extra space available in it. Um, equally, if I was to create a thick volume of another 500 gigs, then this green bar is going to immediately jump another 500 gigs because it's going to use that space. The reason I really like thin volumes is I can be flexible with what I'm doing inside my storage. So if I decide Initially, when I set the NAS up, I just need some shares, some basic storage. Well, I'll go ahead and create it and I'll have myself um, a, a thick volume or a thin volume of a certain size. Um, but what it's doing is any space that's unused in the pool is free for other volumes. So if I decide down the line, oh, I, I need an iSCSI volume, I need something else for a different purpose and I want to keep it separate from everything else, uh, you get that flexibility with the storage pool because all the volumes within it can be 
um, different sizes all within the same space so they can all utilize the same space and each volume isn't going to be taking away uh, drives for redundancy so for example if you had four drives in a RAID 5 you're going to lose effectively one drive's worth of capacity from that uh, RAID for the uh, protection of the data um, so in this example here um, you don't have to lose that for every volume you create. It's, it's, it's lost initially on the storage pool. Every volume within it just absorbs the protection that the pool has. Um, so you can still expand um, the, the static volumes, so they're not completely static. There is still an expand option, um, but the expand options um, will always consume um, the entirety of, of the disks that you assign. So you can't add some extra storage to that static volume and then decide you want an iSCSI volume. It, it won't work like that. You've got to allocate um, all the space to what you've got. So if I was to hit the expand option, oh, I can't do it, there's one already happening. Um, but if I was to hit the expand option, um, it would let you go in and change the, uh, the different options within it so that you can expand it to add more drives, just like we did with the storage pool. Uh, but again, it's, it's just for a single purpose. It's for the exact same task that it's already running. Uh, you can't add any more to it. Okay, hopefully that's um, answered quite a few questions. Uh, just one last point I wanted to cover. You, if you do make a mistake picking between thin or thick, there is always an option here. So if you go into the volume, so if I was to go look at my data vol one, which was a thin volume, there is an option up here. If you click on the actions tab, you can convert it to a thick volume. Um, and the final point here is if you're on a thick volume and you decide you want to free up some unused space in that thick volume back to the storage pool, you can go in here and manage that one and convert it to a thin as well. So you can convert thick to thin, thin to thick as many times as you like. Um, you just cannot do that uh, with a static volume. A static volume is always going to be a static volume. The only way to change it is to effectively move your data to another volume if possible or back it up, um, get rid of that volume and create the new one. Um, there's no way to do it. And if you were to try and take a snapshot um, of a static volume, you'll get a little error here that says they cannot be taken um, of a static volume, uh, you must use thick or thin, uh, whereas I've got the snapshots enabled there on both the, uh, the thin and the thick volumes, so they're supported. Um, if you've got any questions, please do let us know. We're pretty quick at responding to, uh, to comments here. Um, so yeah, if you've got any other questions, you want to see any other videos, uh, please, please leave suggestions in the, in the comments field. Thanks very much.